Welcome to Ignite Your Confidence for women in leadership who want to speak up and stand out. I'm your host, Karen Laus. Here you'll get all of the tips and tools that you need to stand out with unshakable confidence. Let's jump in to today's episode. Well, welcome everybody. Today we have a special guest, Ivy, and she has such great experience and she lives in one of my favorite fairy, very favorite cities in the whole world. So I'm going to turn it over to you, Ivy, to share a little bit about yourself. Hi, everyone. Um, thanks for chiming in and listening. I am Ivy Slater. I am the CEO of Slater Success. It is a consulting, coaching, and training company. Um, in essence, what I do is I go into organizations. I help them scale. I help them lead to the best of their ability. Um, we bring leaders up from all levels. And we've also been having a blast doing things in succession planning. Um, looking at the future of companies is so, so interesting and it's fun and it taps into my creative side as well as my business side. I love that you get to do both. That is so wonderful. Well, we're here to talk about your confidence journey and all the things to inspire other women. So I would love to jump in. First of all, I'm curious, did you, when you were younger say, this is what I want to do for a living? And if not, just tell us a little bit about, well, either way, tell us how your career progressed. Well, if you, if you ask the young Ivy, what are you going to do when she, you grow up? The answer would be, I'm going to dance. I'm going to uh, be a dancer. I'm going to dance. Um, I, I was probably the one of the, I, I watched the Tony Awards the other night. I'm watching, you know, uh, I, I don't really care who wins, but I just like to watch the performances. And I look <laughs> over at my husband and say, like, damn, I got to take a tap class again. I haven't taken tap in a while. That looks, I, I miss how much fun that is. Aww. So um, that is something, you know, if you ask the young Andy, what brings her joy? And today it's like, oh, you get to go to a party. It's like, oh, we get to dance. Oh, that's so fun. Well, what advice, now you're making me think about our younger selves. What advice would you give or what would you want to say to your younger self now that you know? what life is all about for you. I think Karen, that's where you talk about the confidence piece. I would tell my younger self to look in the mirror and see back at you, what others see in you and own it sooner. Own it sooner. Um, I think, you know, family, friends have always seen things in me that I never believed to be true. And as I've gone through this journey of life, let alone business, um, I was like, wow, I look over my shoulder. Who said that? Wait, who said that? Was that me? <laughs> <laughs> and I'll, and I'll, I'll always say, you know, it, as I'm working with my clients, I have, I, I get this mental, you know, pop in of like, who said that over your shoulder? Where'd that come from? How did it come out of your mouth? <laughs> And I, I think that that's the true is others see us so often in such brilliant light mm -hmm. and we see all of our flaws, mm. we see all the things that we, you know, we're pretty hypocritical of ourselves. Yes. You know, I'm writing and this I one down, <laughs> see yourself in brilliant light. <laughs> see yourself in brilliant light. See yourself in the, ref that reflection of the brilliance of the sunshine mm. and see what those rays are that are your brilliance and start owning it sooner. I wish I owned mine sooner. Mm -hmm. And if it's the one thing I could pass on to my clients, to my loved ones is see your brilliance, own it. And don't be arrogant. That doesn't mean be arrogant about it, but it means lean into it and use it for a place as a place to help and give to others. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not about, hey, I'm so smart or, hey, I know this. It's not from that place of go me. It's a place <laughs> of make a difference to others. Yeah. And when we have that opportunity to make a difference to others, we have a stronger ability to own what the gifts we have. Oh, that is so beautiful. It's so fascinating to me how many women in particular have such a hard time with what we would call, you know, promoting yourself. We yeah. look at, oh, I'm so worried about being arrogant. People always say that. And I love what you said. If we come from a place of service and 
you know, frankly, I also, I also tell people it's about making yourself visible. You don't want to be the best kept secret in your industry. <laughs> And, and, you know, and I, I love that you're saying that because I want to be really transparent. That doesn't mean when we come from a place of service that we should discount or undervalue ourselves. We should charge right. top dollar Yes. For, the, for, the, for what we do and the brilliance we own. Mm -hmm. okay? mm -hmm. But it's coming and delivering from a place of service because I also get annoyed of, you know, women leaders undervaluing themselves, undercharging asking for less, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, I, I'm not saying when we say, talk about being of service and giving of service, that that means, oh, we give it away. Don't get me wrong, ladies and gentlemen, we own our value and our brilliance and we charge for the, the transformation in our deliverables. Beautifully said. Transformation in our deliverables. Ah, oh, that's so powerful. What's an example of a transformation in your deliverables that you want to share as a success story that might inspire others? Okay. Um, which one should we get? Which one should we do today, Karen? Ooh, give me a drop down menu. <laughs> um, so if I think about, if I think about, an early client who asked me a question, we met at a conference and we just started chatting as we were walking out of one of the sessions. And we're kind of leaning against the wall in the vestibule and chatting, get to know each other and said, hey, there's lunch, why don't we go on to lunch? And she said, let me ask you something, Ivy. Is this actually a business? That was the question. Is this actually a business that somebody would pay for? And this is somebody who has higher education than me, degrees, certificates, CPAs, MBAs, da, 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 da. You, you <laughs> just throw, keep throwing those initials out there, right? <laughs> they got a lot of credentials, right? And say so they ask me, like, is this actually a business model that that you could do that you that that you can make a living off of? Was the question mm -hmm. today that model? right? From that question of charging almost $25 an hour back 10 years ago, now has clients coming in at a $10 million mark. Oh, <gasps> what? That gives me that's, goosebumps. Right? That's wow. right. Look, because we looked at that person's brilliance, mm -hmm. looked how the brilliance fit the marketplace not where it was, where the, the what where it fit the marketplace. Did the work in scaling to that marketplace, and where and oh my goodness, crushed it during the pandemic. Wow! And used that to, as a launching pad to go even bigger. And in our call this week, and in, in our in our uh, our regular scheduled call this week said, remember, Ivy, I'm heading out for three weeks to Europe. I'll talk to you in July. I'm like, okay. <laughs> that's, that's, that's today's story. That's, in that's amazing. 10 years ago, $25 an hour, did and you today, say? Today, today she serves clients at the $10 million mark in revenue as her ideal client. And wow. they are her clients. Wow. And her entire business is, a, is takes the same brilliance she was doing early on, but transformed it into the marketplace that mm -hmm. needs her. How do you do that? So let's, let's dive in if we could with, I'm thinking about the woman that's listening to this going, that sounds amazing, but how the heck do you do it? Or at least where do you start? Can you give us a tip on that? So I, I, that's a good question on where do you start? You know, start by looking, going back to what we said before, start by looking at your skill set mm -hmm. for who does this help? Not who do I help now, but where does this skill set transcend? What marketplaces does it have an impact in? Okay. I work with an enormous amount in the legal community, right? I was at a legal event last night. I'm going to another legal event tonight. 
70 plus percent of my clients are either law firms or somewhere affiliated in the legal community. Mm -hmm. I am not a lawyer. <laughs> okay. My skill set transcends to what that community needs. It fills the need within that community, right? Mm -hmm. Did I see that 15 years ago when I started this company? No. Mm -hmm. I saw something that was at the, the a, a, a small, why would any attorney hire me? I'm not an attorney. What is, you know, what do I know? I know how to build a business. I understand what it is to market, what it is to sell, how to, how to maneuver the finances to scale. What does it mean, right? How much capital do you need? What your overhead, your P&L, and I'm not a CFO. Mm -hmm. I just ran a business for 30 some odd years. <laughs> That's my knowledge base. I've been in sales for more than that. Mm -hmm. So I was just doing some, some, Give back coaching for a university, okay, for a class um, that I'm guest speaking at. And, you know, I'm, I'm meeting with their groups and we're talking about like their pitch and, and their business models. I'm asking them questions. You know, I'm like, what's the problem you solve? And, you know, what, where, where would money fit, right? Why would somebody give money, right? Where's the investment? Did you do your market research? What did your market research tell you? What other research do you need to do? What is it about creating a commotion, emotional connection to any person you do business with? Mm. Karen, here's an example. First time we talked, we did not get on to record a podcast. You were in your car. <laughs> yeah. I was, I think, in a ponytail and no makeup, right? <laughs> kind of sitting in my sweatpants, Indian style, right? And we're just chatting. Yeah. And here we are. You're a guest on her success story. I'm a guest on here and we're not done collaborating. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it started with truly just two women talking. That's a brilliant way to say it. It's true. It's so simple, isn't it? It's building relationships and starting there. You know, and I'll never forget the first time I met, I was like, yeah, wait, Karen was in a car, right? And, we, and she's like, <laughs> You know, play, play it was so not it. how I would have wanted. I'm like, yeah, I did see you. You know, I, I, and we just we started with what what this laughter, and we made fun of it, and we laughed. <laughs> Where are you? Where are you from? Oh, yeah. We just had fun, and we talked about New York, and and we built we built a connection between two human beings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's such a good yeah. Go ahead. No, and and that's the crux of good business. Yes. That is so powerful. And remembering that sometimes we make these things harder than they need to be. And if we can start with being ourselves, okay. <laughs> being someone that cares about other people, <laughs> that thinks, you know, how can I be of service to someone else while maintaining my own boundaries? I mean, there's so many, so many things that we could talk about, but at the end of the day, it's like you said, it's about relationships people to business with people to the point I'll, I'll, okay I'm going to tell you a crazy story can I tell Please you do story? tell us yes okay um my crazy story a bunch of years ago I ordered something from one of the big online brands I'm not going to say names okay and it came in broken uh, okay and I went back to customer service right and they sent another one across the country on a big shipper, this, that, and the other thing. And it came in broken. What? The second one? And, and I'm like, oh, my God. And so, you know, my husband's like, oh, I'll call the credit card company and do complaints and this, that, and the other thing. And I'm calling customer service. And I, and I eventually get on this combined call in the credit card company because this was not, this was not a $20 item. This mm. was over a thousand dollar piece of furniture. Oh, wow. Okay. 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 So, and they get to this and all of a sudden the customer service is like, well, hold on, let me see how I can help you. And they're like, they, they calm down the credit card company. It's like, yeah, yeah, no, no, no. We're going to reverse that. We're going to take care of this. So they hop off and this person proceeds. Here's my name and my direct extension. Hmm. We both like just turned our heads, right? Yes. 
here's my name, here's my direct extension, blah, 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 blah. We're going to reship this. I'm going to call you, but feel free to call me and check on it. And when you get that and they're unpacking it, I want you to call me. Here are my hours. If it's not around those hours, just let me know and I'll make sure to call you from home. Oh my gosh. Okay. And all of a sudden, you know, now my kids are bought a new apartment. They're buying some things. And I'm like, which company did I tell them to call and order some, you know, did you check this website? Mm -hmm. They're really good. They shipped me a couple of things that were broken. Their customer service, the person who gave me, and my husband, they, and Len, Len, when they always get, my husband goes, who's calling you that you're picking it up? We're in the middle of delivery. I was like, oh, it's, it's Mary. And, you know, <laughs> hey, Mary, yeah, the truck's right here. He goes, oh, you, I never, I'll, 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 the national company has somebody calling. <laughs> That is such a powerful story. People do business with people, big brands and all. Customer service is one of the most important things brands to put their money behind. Yeah, it's so true. It's so true. And how often do we forget this? Or we just, yeah, we, we forget it or we're going about our day. We're thinking, oh, it doesn't really matter or whatever. We might not even be thinking about it. So, oh my goodness. <laughs> That that that's how important relationships are. Mm -hmm. That's how important. Um, I, I can get. I'll give you another one. I was flying my mom home, yeah, with her aide, and we're at the airport, and I see the the would start delays start going up, and I I will say this land. I'm a Delta flyer. I'm, you know, I'm plan. I I do all my business travel. You know, they tell you to pick an airline and don't worry mm -hmm. about. Me. And I did Delta years ago when I started business traveling, right. And I, so now having traveled a lot for work, I see the problem that's starting to go on. Mm. I immediately go to the counter and I look and I look at the person's name tag and I'll just call her Karen, right? Yeah. Cause why not? <laughs> like, Karen, listen, I, this is, uh, um, Ivy, I put my hand across the counter and to go to shake her hand. She looks at me weird. <laughs> I said, let me tell you, I I'm, I'm, I'm if you check my status and plan, and it's like, none of that matters. Here's what really matters today. I'm with my 90 some odd year old mom and her aide. And this is a big deal for her to travel and getting her to the airport, letting her getting her on the other side. And I see, you know, I see delays. I see part issues. Mm -hmm. What can you do to help me? Mm -hmm. I just asked the question and she looks up and she sees my mom sitting there in her wheelchair and her aide with her. And she goes, can you give me a minute? I said, take all the time you world. Now I have a line or a queue behind me. That's that, you know, and they're like, what's going to happen in different flights and this, and the people are yelling and screaming and the, uh. people the counter are managing the best they can. And Karen is looking at me and she goes, just hang with me. Just hang with me. I said, you got it. I, and I looked at her and I said, I know you can help me. Oh, and I just put it out there. And lo and behold, and she said, Ivy, we can get you back to New York. You, your mom and her aide. The seats might not be together. I said, that's okay. We'll figure it all out. We'll figure it all out. I said, but I just, I have my husband waiting on the other side. We need to get, I can't take her back and then take, take her to the airport again another day. This is a big deal. Yeah. And she goes, I get you. She not just now with this long line behind you, not just retickets me takes me, my mom, and the aide, walks us to the new counter, introduces us to the woman behind the desk. What? And said, these are your last three seats I just booked for Ivy and her family. Oh. This is the situation. I know the seats are not together. She looks at me and she looks down and she goes, hi, Mrs. Slater, welcome for flying with us. We'll see what we can do. And she goes, I'll see how we can get. I said, I'm a little concerned with my mom sitting by herself. I don't care where we sit. And if we can't sit, but it's all fine. She goes, I got you. And they did. And guess what I did after that? I went online and I wrote the review and I named names and I named people because that's what makes a company. Uh, yes, it's so true. And do you feel like this has always been in you throughout your whole life 
I'm, I'm just curious if you feel like this is a natural thing that you developed or, or I mean, natural thing, or did you develop it over time or both? Um, I'm going to tell you, I complete transparency. I was an incredibly shy kid. I was really? a very, very, very shy child. I spent most of my early years behind my mother's leg, not wow. talking to anybody. If they came to the house, didn't talk in school, mm -hmm. didn't talk in class. So this is something I worked on. And what has helped me as a natural introvert is to create personal connection with one person to then launch onto the group. That's a wonderful way to start. That's such great advice for people that are listening, because I know we have plenty of introverts that are listening to this as well. And sometimes we need that first step. What is the first thing we can do? Powerful. And, you know, that that's, that's what I do. Mm -hmm. I look at creating that relationship. Yeah. And, and it more than anything is a help to me. Tell us more about that because I want people to hear this. So I have said to people, and I did this the other day, um, I have said to people point blank, you know, going out there and networking to this day, walking, I, and I'm going, I'm going this evening, you know, listeners, I'm going tonight and I will take a deep breath before I walk into that room. Mm -hmm. And I know, I know people on the other side and I will still take a deep breath before I walk into that room mm -hmm. because I have to ground myself because it's not easy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I say to myself, Ivy, there's going to be somebody there who is very uncomfortable being in this room with a lot of people and has, and don't, you know, and is nervous and uncomfortable. And if I can act as their host and make them comfortable and bring ease to them, it will make it easy. It makes it easier for me. That's such a great attitude to have. And it puts you in such a different mindset, doesn't it? Well, it gives me it gives me a, a why to walk into the room. Ah, uh, mm -hmm. it gives me a why mm -hmm. to walk in the room. You know, in networking, you know, yeah, hey, we're there to do business. But let's not don't get me wrong, right? Mm -hmm. I'm walking in because this is good for Slater's success. It's good for my company. It's good for helping the brand build, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, I'm there for connecting to people, which is a help to, and an asset to my business. Mm -hmm. But my main principle is I'm there to connect to people. And if I can help other people who are awkward or funny in a room, whether it be a dozen, a hundred or 500, then I know I've helped others. And in sense, in, in hence, in helping others, that's a help to me. Because it helps, it gives me the power of comfort of not necessarily comfort, but the power of walking into the room in less, <laughs> less uncomfortableness. I'm not going to tell you I'm comfortable because that's like a blatant lie. I was thinking about how, when we first met, how incredibly approachable and, and even more so how disarming you are to be in your presence, Ivy, it, it's, it's a beautiful thing and you make people feel so comfortable and this reminds me about what, and I love how you're sharing this because it's such a, a great reminder of a strategy. It doesn't have to be just like we were talking about before. These things don't have to be as hard as we make up in our heads that if we simply think like, how can I make this person feel important or how can I connect with them? Just make them feel good about themselves. I mean, who knows, but being kind, it's, because I, I was so embarrassed to meet you the first time in my car, <laughs> but I and really, I think it was like the most memorable because you were so real. Isn't it fascinating? I mean, right there, yeah, right there. Like you came across to somebody, you came across to me, and I guess this is important for the listeners to hear. You came across to me that this was important to you, that no matter where you were, you were going to make this happen. Mm. Right. As opposed to be looking, you know, we're, we're always looking for what the quote unquote, and I'll put it in quotes, like that right thing. Oh, I have to be at my desk and I have to have my lights yes. on and I have, you know, this and that and the other thing, but it wasn't that call. It was just us getting to know each other because we were connected. Yeah. And, you know, you showing up, you know, walking into a hotel or an event or whatever it was you were traveling and you, you did the connection from the car and you made sure and you came on video and we just... You know, it was so real. I got to know Karen, not mm -hmm. the, you know, not Karen Laos, the professional speaker. I got to know Karen. <laughs> and, and that's who I wanted to know in that moment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's so true. 
Gosh, I'm, I want to know what is the best advice you've ever been given? Wow. A um, couple of things, a couple of things. Okay. One, um, live by the Nike slogan. Mm. Just do it. Never let beliefs or confidence stop or what, or what the world perceives as the right way to do something to define how you do it. And I'm not talking about breaking laws or anything else. Okay. <laughs> what I'm referring to is, you know, when I got into the printing world in my mid to late twenties, later twenties, okay. Women in printing were receptionists, bookkeepers and production assistants, never to be production managers. Mm. And I came in in sales and I got more doors shut in my face than can anybody can ever imagine. Okay. And it never stopped me. And when I went to start, you know, pitching to own a piece of the business because my revenue dictated I should own a piece of this company. My sales dictated it. My revenue and sales dictated that, right? When the guys said, huh? I continued to take a stand. Oh. When I went into Slater success and I went in to become a coach at 07 and opened this company in January of 08. And everybody said, what are you doing? Can you make a living? What do you charge? How do you, how do you, you know, what does that mean? Yeah. Who buys that? Mm-hmm. Can you pay a bill? My accountant started berating me and yelling at me. Fired him. <laughs> Never let somebody. And I and I remember a client a bunch of years ago come to me and say, hey, I have this idea for a second business, da, 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 da. And this, this, and that person said it won't work. Mm. And I said, okay. And they're like, well, what do you think? And I said, what do you think? Because if we believe, now that we do have to do our market research, we have to do the business responsibility stuff. And if we do our market research and there is no interest in the marketplace and we spin it and turn it a few different ways and they're still not interested, okay, get it. But if none of that happened and they're just looking at a concept and say, eh, that's not going to work, go prove them wrong. Mm -hmm. But do your research, do have your statistics, have your numbers, have it all in place. And don't let anybody ever say you can't do something. Yes. Amen to that. Well, Ivy, is there anything that I haven't asked you yet that you want to ask or that you want to add? Um, I think the last thing I think as far as business is... Yeah is know your numbers. Numbers mm. tell you the story. Don't be afraid to read the book. And if you're hesitant to read the book, get help about, with it. Mm. And nobody who talks down to you, somebody will help you and educate you. But know the numbers tell you a story. Numbers tell you a story in your finances. Numbers tell you a story in your sales. Numbers tell you a story in your marketing. Numbers tell you a story in how long people, in the amount of years people stay with your company. Mm. All those numbers are a powerful story. Mm -hmm. Read the book. It will give you a strategy for moving to the next level. Yeah. Beautifully said. Well, where can we reach you, Ivy? Um, best way to check me out is go to slatersuccess.com. You can download a chapter of my book from the bar to the boardroom, choreographing business success through authentic relationships. That's yours to have. There's a great video on there on tra uh, seven traits of great leadership. Um, you could connect with me there and write me a note. That would be Ooh. lovely. Connect with me on LinkedIn, Ivy Slater. And let me know you heard me with Karen Laus. Let me know that these are the connections that we're both making because Karen said it really well. It's about the relationships we're building. That is a beautiful way to end. It is about the relationships. And Ivy, I am so glad that we met and I'm so grateful to have you here today. So thank you for joining the show. Thank you so much for having me. And I can't wait till either I'm on the West Coast or you're on the East Coast next.
Yes. <laughs> and that's a wrap of another episode of Ignite Your Confidence. I'm your host, Karen Laus. Thank you so much for listening. If you love today's episode, please subscribe and leave a review. It helps other people find the podcast faster, and it certainly helps me. If you're interested in more tips and tools around confidence, please join me over in my Facebook group called Ignite Your Confidence with Karen Laus. Remember, you too can stand out with unshakable confidence.